<laughs> Please continue. Okay. From where? Why don't you there. start from the, the button right shoes? Here? Yes, oh, okay. ma'am. The button shoes. This is this is me. I'm trying to figure out. I might have been three years old. Does that look like about three and maybe four or five, or or four for me and five for Jerry? And look at the the, the little teapot and the, the old telephone. See the old telephone, Caitlin. That's the kind they used to have, and you you had a you had a you were on a party line, and if you picked up the receiver, somebody on your party line could be talking, so you'd have to hang up and wait until they were finished. That's a thing of the past, very past. And these little shoes, they had buttons and little buttonholes, like would be on a sweater, and you had to close the buttons with a a button hook. It was a little little long thing with a little hook on the edge and you take a hold of the button and pull it through the loop. And I used to, I used to call it a, a hooky button instead of a button hook. <laughs> that's what my mother said. So that that that's a picture of us as we were growing up. Probably four and five or three and four, I'm not sure what it would have been. But I have I got to put all the information on the back of these pictures before before they, um, you know, all, all that information disappears when I disappear, <laughs> you know. So it, it, it's good to keep things up. I wish, I've got some information upstairs and I'll, I'll haul some of it out and, and I'll line up some of it and, and give to you, okay? How about and this, this picture right here? This picture? This, this is my, this is the, our house on Kenmore Avenue, 229 Kenmore Avenue in Buffalo. That's my mom, Dorothea Cam Werder. That's my older brother, Jerry Gerard Jr. That's me. He was probably, I would say maybe 13. I kind of remember that dress. I think I was maybe about 11 or 12, maybe 12. And that was, this was my younger brother, Bus. He was four years younger than I was. He was probably about eight there. Paul was maybe about five. I think there was about three years difference between the two of them. And we all look so sad. There's another picture like this that Winnie has, my sister-in-law, with these same outfits on, I think. And we looked happier because we had a smile. So I don't know whether the photographer made us not smile and made them smile or whatever, but I said to Winnie, I watched your picture because we look happier. We look like a bunch of sad sacks there. Look at poor, <laughs> poor Buss, he looks, <laughs> doesn't he looks forlorn? He does. Doesn't he? It was Buss's actual name? Pardon me? What is Buss his real name? Richard. Richard, Paul Jr. What year was that, Graham? That was probably 30, 31. Look at the old furniture, the old stuffed chair. This was a fireplace, and it was a wood-burning fireplace, but I don't ever remember having a fire in it. See, there's an old radiant heater in there that they used to light with a match, and you'd get some heat from that. But I remember that living room, yeah, that was, yeah. And that was in Kenmore? That was on Kenmore Avenue, yeah. Yeah. Were you, in your, New York. did your husband court you in that living room? Oh yeah, uh huh, exactly, right? Yeah, Tommy used to take a. He was in law school. No, he was in Canisius. He was a senior at Canisius, and he used to hop on a bus, streetcar. Excuse me, streetcar. There weren't many buses in Buffalo at that time. Hop on a streetcar, probably at uh, Mainan Ferry or Mainan Utica, and, uh, and then we'd walk down to. There was a little restaurant on Niagara Falls Boulevard about three or four blocks down on the boulevard from Kenmore Avenue. And he'd have a couple of beers. I never liked beer. He'd have a couple of beers. And then um, when he was in law school, he'd come down and we'd go, we'd have a date. And he'd hop on the streetcar again. And he worked nights in gas stations while he was going to law school. So he'd have to leave like about 10 o'clock because he worked the midnight shift. And then he, gas stations weren't too busy through the night, so he'd study. So it was a good, it was a good uh, part-time job to study, because you were just maintaining really some property, and not not pulling a lot of gasoline, I guess you know. So 
and then he'd take a streetcar and go back home. Nobody had cars. I mean, young people didn't have cars, not the poor young people. <laughs> so that's, that was the story of our dating. Then when he graduated from law school, he, he, had, uh, he had joined the 174th Infantry as an 18-year-old, gone to summer camps, and in 1940, the 1974, the 174th went away supposedly for a year's training. They went to Fort Dix, New Jersey, and I think there were warnings or inklings that there might be a war coming up, and I think that was why the government mo mobilized these um, National Guard units and had them do some training so that when war did break out, they'd be qualified to enter into it and to, to do something and uh, take care of whoever our enemy was going to be, who ended up was Hitler, right? Right. And that was World that, War II? That was World War II, yeah. So. <laughs> <laughs>